Hi, I'm Don Baudin from SampleLibraryReview.com and today we're going to be digging into BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover. BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover downloads as 174 megabytes. That's right, megabytes, not gigabytes. It's an orchestral sample library sampling the BBC Symphony Orchestra. It includes strings, brass, woodwinds, and percussion, and it's housed in Spitfire Audio's dedicated plugin, which is VST, AU, AAX, and NKS compatible. The library sells for $49, 49 euros or 49 pounds, or you could write the developer, tell them about their, your financial woes, and they may just send you a copy for free. Now, one of the first things I do anytime I get a sample library is to either orchestrate out and try to compose with it, or take a very familiar piece that I think might be a conductive conducive to the sample library itself. Since this library itself is limited to uh, a lot of uh, sustained longs and some staccato, um, I thought, what better way than to go to a master who wrote a wonderful piece of music with just staccatos and sustained longs. <laughs> Interface is broken down into a simple graphical user interface with uh, different sections here with little pop-up menus showing you which instruments you can load in by clicking right on them. Or you could use the developer's more traditional browser method to load each of the instruments individually. From left to right, you have dynamics, expression controls, a de dedicated reverb send, and then the articulations available for each of the instruments you load. The library is able to change articulations with key switching, which is down at the bottom of the keyboard, starting at C, negative two. It also offers the ability for you to drag those key switches wherever you would like. Although I do highly recommend you learn to use them down at C, negative two, because then it is compatible with any other BBC Symphony Orchestra plugins that you may have or that you may work with your collaborators on. The plugin also allows for resizing. You can shrink this guy down real small or make him real big. There's also settings for audio preferences and whatnot, and I'll be sure to include a link straight over to Sample Library Reviews review page of BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover if you want to learn all about the interface. All right, I've got uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover loaded up here. As you can see, it's a very colorful um, graphical interface, which I think is going to be very easy for those who are not familiar with an orchestra to jump into as it's designed in the same shape as the orchestra players will sit. We've got violin ones, violin twos, violas, cello. Then when we move to a wind section, we've got piccolo, flutes, Oboes, clarinets, bassoons, and moving on to the brass, horns, trumpets, trombones, bass trombones, and tuba. And then we've got percussion, harp and celeste patch, a percussion patch, and a tuned percussion. So we'll dive in deeper to each of these here in this first look section.
very nice sound overall. I really think that the strings of any sampled orchestral library are kind of the mm, the high marker. That's where you go to first to make sure that they can really hold up within uh, your workflow. For the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover, it looks like they've delivered four articulations. So there is no legato, but we've got longs. Spiccato. Pizzicato. And a tremolo patch. Now, this is the limitation of the library here, comparing it to the BBC Core or the full BBC Symphony Orchestra that they've released. Just these four articulations, that is the biggest of the limiting factors. So looking at this collection, um, we've got uh, Violin 2s, one click, and it loads right up. as well as violas. cello section. on to our woodwinds. One thing I'm hearing throughout the library thus far, comparing it to uh, much larger versions of the library, or any other developer sample library, is that um, I'm not quite getting as many dynamic ranges, perhaps, as I would. Uh, and that has a, probably a lot to do with the way that they've programmed this in. Now, there is as we were listening to with the celli here. A full range, and it does cross fade smoothly from a lower dynamic to a higher dynamic. But my main thought here is that we do not have niente, which is a zero 
no sound whatsoever. And um, for those who might criticize the library with that, I always say anytime a sample library is released without going to silence, that that is a natural way to release it. That is how players play. Players don't play down to zero. They start at mm, a relatively, um, relatively soft level, not so much a silence. Let's go ahead and let's do a bass. I don't want to skip it. What I'm really liking about the way they've translated this library to such a reduced version is the detail in the samples themselves. Um, for instance, when I'm playing the pizzicato uh, articulations throughout the strings, I'm hearing a little bit of, um, of a stop, and you can actually hear it with a release on the sample. Hear that little afterwards. It's not anything that's a release trigger, it's a release from the player. Yeah. Adds a lot of realism um, when you add all these together, in my opinion, as compared to a library where you're trying to distill it down, micro-tune every bit, and clean out any additional noise. We're in the flute section here. Discovery gives us a piccolo. And one thing I could say right now is we've got no reverb turned up, and I find the library is has a nice room to it, and I think that's this uh, Maldeval studio sound that they're capturing. Just a little bit of tail. Not overbearing, not super reverby wet, just enough to fill up and have a tiny bit of tail there. Then we've got three flutes playing together for this next patch. I do hear a little bit of um, boldness at the attack of some of these, depending on my velocity when I'm playing the long notes. And that is really the, that's where I hear a little difference between the sample. And that's from that C4 to D4. Hear that low overtone. And I could, that just could be the way it resonates in the room. It just happens to be between uh, the D and the... 
the D in that sharp. I know that there were some uh, critiques about the original BBC Symphony Orchestra release in which some of the woodwinds, the other users felt that um, it was inconsistent across the keyboard. Um, I'm hearing the same sample set uh, with those little inconsistencies here, although I can't speak to if it's the same criticism as we've heard before, uh, because I simply have not reviewed the library. Kind of that sweet spot for me. I really love this sound of the oboe. This is three oboes. Clarinets. Oh, I skipped the oboe staccatos, didn't I? I'm hearing a little inconsistency in this one as well. I'm hearing a little vibrato here. We're more a straight tone when it's a little higher. It doesn't sound awful. It's just, uh, again, something I'm kind of pointing out. Um, I feel like the clarinet itself, these clarinets, these three clarinets, I should say, the, in this space, they're very roomy. Um, they're very reedish. Uh, and I know it is a clarinet with reeds. I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I'm not getting the smoothness, smoothness of a clarinet, which I would expect with a solo clarinet. And once you have the three, uh, two or three, actually, you always want three, two sounds like a duet. So three instruments together. Um, it's going to start to sound uh, a bit, um, I don't want to say synthesized, but you're having those waveforms playing off each other. And that's what I'm hearing here in these clarinets. to the bassoon. Very nice. Let's continue on. We've got horns. a big difference in my dynamic switching from the long notes to the staccatissimos. <laughs> Especially in this range. And I think uh, a few users of the original library were critical of the brass. Um, and I think that is... 
I, I have to say this brass does sound very nice. However, it doesn't sound like modern big trailer brass. It doesn't have that splat that we're hearing in some of the newer scores that are being released uh, over the last two or three years, really. And I think maybe that's where that criticism is coming from. That's my humble opinion. Now that's a lot of ringing out for no uh, no verb turned up. Here's our verb right here. I have, and um, and that must just be the resonate the way it resonates in that studio there. Yeah. We've got tenor trombones. I'd be very curious to hear what kind of splat we get on these stuckatissimos. Oh, that is nice. And that's our tenor trombone. I can't wait to check out the bass trombones. And our tuba. What I'm hearing in this is that uh, mixer, Jake Jackson, I believe, decided that the brass would be best mixed with more room than the close mics. Because I'm hearing a lot more room in especially the side of the brass. It just sounds like we get a lot more brass there. Uh, a lot more room in the mix, since this is a stereo mix here. All right, we got uh, the first of the percussion harp plucked. Nice clean sound. Now we've got timpani hits. And untuned. Right, the way they've set these up is only on the white keys for their untuned percussion and only on one key per instrument. So we've got this um, like a field snare. I 
really like the sound of the mix for these percussion instruments. It's reminding me a little bit of one of my favorite instruments, not to drop other instrument developers' names, but um, Project Sam's True Strike. There's a quality about the being in the space that I absolutely love about that percussion library, and I'm getting that vibe, similar vibe with this as well. Here in our second tuned, uh, our third percussion patch is tuned percussion tubular bells. And if you can hear the detail there, you're actually getting a little bit of that low end oomph of the hammer resonating in the room. Or maybe that is the timpani rumbling from sympathetic resonance. I'm unsure. Be curious. What do you guys think? All right, with a marimba. Xylophone. Glockenspiel. And again, I really appreciate the percussion in these tuned percussion samples. I feel like the space um, and the way that they've captured this with the mix, I really think this is something I might go to regularly, especially given the tiny, tiny footprint of this guy. All right, I'm really pleased with what they are delivering for a $49 instrument. I have to say, having this complete set distilled down, this sample set distilled down um, from players who all play together regularly in that Medieval Studios, which the room normally sounds fantastic, with this mix that Jake Jackson has done, it's really nice and I feel like it blends together so easily. Uh, that's exactly the kind of thing I spend weeks working with other composers on when I do private sessions once in a while, is helping them try to get their orchestra to sound real and in the same room together. Well, this eliminates all of that work by having everything already recorded in the same room with world-class musicians who are used to playing together. Now, what do I think about the library as far as who it's for? Well, I think anybody who is looking for a complete orchestra package in the media world for their laptop, um, I wouldn't even hesitate to pick this up, and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it at this moment. Uh, it's got such a small footprint at under 200 megabytes to be able to have uh, as a travel rig to write. As far as why I kind of agree with Spitfire that this could change everything or this changes everything, whatever the marketing tag was, this kind of democratizes orchestral recording and composing, meaning that now anyone with um, a laptop, $49, or a good reason to write in to ask for the library for free can now be writing and scoring orchestral music with one of the world's best elite sounding orchestras that's out there as a virtual instrument. There's great balance across the instruments, and although I did find a little bit of inconsistencies, um, it sounds like those are the same inconsistencies that I've heard others that reviewed the full version of BBC Symphony Orchestra um, comment for their cons and critiques. This encourages every level of music maker from hobbyist to student to professionals to create and collaborate on orchestral music by the addition of this mode where you're able to switch from one of the BBC Orchestra plugins to another. I think it's going to have a big effect on those who are orchestrators working on projects with other 
composers is you'll be able to have a $49 plug-in to write your orchestration in uh, and send it over to a collaborator who may have a full version or the core version for final output for mix. The other big thing I think Think this will be helpful for is educators being able to have uh, an advanced set of tools that you could work with your students can work with that you can talk and learn about orchestration in the virtual world which is the way that 80 to 90 percent of music is being made these days is has such an advantage to the traditional pen and paper and um, reaching out and waiting for that one day you get to hear a real orchestra play your music and that might even be a thing that's going away more and more i don't know uh, when you're watching this video but i'm recording it during the pandemic of 2020 which means that no orchestras are getting together right now that means there's zero orchestras congregating for me to have a chance to record my music. The only way I can hear my musical ideas in an orchestral way is through digital technology. And I believe Spitfire Audio's Discover has really knocked this out of the park and democratized orchestral composing. Thanks so much for taking a little time to discover <laughs> Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover along with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is this something you're interested in? Is it something you might pick up for your laptop if you're a media composer looking for something slim? Is it something you're thinking about for collaborations, working in, with other composers or other orchestrators? I'd love to get your response and feedback and what you think overall about this approach to a plugin. I'd love to read your comments below. If you're not already, please like, share, or subscribe to the channel, and be sure to head over to samplelibraryreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and a weekly deal compressor.